have a look at cubic equations in a minute. Cubic equations are what happens when this thing over here is cubed instead of squared. But before we get there, I want you to remember this because this is connection I want to make for you. For x squared equals 81, there's more than one solution for this, isn't there, right? The obvious solution to x squared equals 81, the obvious solution is... Plus minus 9. <laughs> okay, very good. We got the, the answer straight away. But the obvious answer is 9. But there is a plus or minus. There's actually two solutions. Can you remind me why there are two solutions? Why, why are there two solutions? Yeah. Because they go 9 squared. Yeah, very good. Let's hold, hold that thought. Why are there two solutions? This is so important, I want you to write it down with me. Why two solutions? Not because there is, because if you look back at the original equation, right? 9 squared equals 81. Negative 9 squared is 81 as well. Right? So being that, there are two numbers you can put into this equation and they both work, then both of those are solutions. That's why there are two. Okay? If there were like 15 numbers you could put into here that would all work, then there'd be 15 solutions. Okay? So it's just because I can find more numbers that satisfy it. When you come back to this question which we did earlier, right? this question has one solution. Because there's only a single number you can put in here, that works. But this one had two solutions. Because you can put in either of these, and they would both equal to zero once you evaluate. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, therefore, consider. Let's have a go at this. Uh, we'll go with just that. No, yeah, that'll do. Okay. So, here's another equation, and I'm trying to work out how many numbers are there that I can put into it that will solve it. Okay? Now, an obvious choice is just like you took the square root of 81 to get to 9. You take the square root of 81 to get to 9. You can take the cube root of 27 to get to the answer. And the cube root is 3. Before we write that down, I'd like us to actually write down that operation. Okay? To undo... The mathematical word is actually inverse. To undo this cube, I'm going to take the cube root. Okay, like that. Now your calculator has a cube root button on it. In fact, I would show them you on my calculator, except I just gave them both away. Um, it's uh, right above the square root button. Do you notice there in yellow? So if you went shift square root, you'd get the cube root button. Okay, and then you can, sure enough, you can put 27 underneath there, and you will get three. We said plus minus nine here. Right? Now many people, their conclusion is, oh, when you solve an equation like this, there's a plus or minus. Why is there? And the answer is, because. Right? But I, I'm trying to get across to you, it's not because, there's a real reason. The people who only say because, when they look at this, they'll put a plus minus here as well. Right? Now, this doesn't work. Can you help me say why Why has one solution and only one? Jake, what do you reckon? Um, oh. Uh, a confident towards. <laughs> Ryan, you want to have a go at rescuing him? Uh, so with the top one, if you do a negative times a negative, it equals positive. But when you've got three, a negative times a negative times a negative, negative is negative. So if we try negative three and we cube it, right? What cubing means, as Ryan suggested, was you take that number and then you multiply it by itself that many times, right? But you can see, and this actually is very similar to the, um, the locker problem, the riddle, do you remember, right? <coughs> and I'm going to come back to that point in a second. How many negative signs are there? Three. There's an odd number. There's an odd number. So these two will pair up, but this one will not pair up. So that's why you get that. <laughs> No, don't. <laughs> that would be really mean. Just do the job, man. Okay. So please note. Please note, Year 10. When you're solving cubic equations of this form, they're very simple. How many solutions do you get? Two. You don't get plus or minus. 
minus. You don't get plus or minus. You just get the plus. What is it exactly? What? Uh, okay, so I've been asked, and um, this goes to some of the examples. If you haven't already opened up your laptop to 703, do it now. Yep, I'll show you. As you do that, please do it quietly so you can listen to what I'm about to say. Jacob, you too. The question was, what does it mean to leave your answer in exam form? Let me show you. Okay? I chose x cubed exact. x cubed equals 27 because 27 is a cubic number. It gives you a nice neat answer at the end. But I can very easily change that. I could ask you to solve this. 30 is not a cubic number. Um, there, a lot of people will look at that and they'll write 10 because they're like, I could divide by 3. Okay. Now, when you go to your calculator, I'd like you to do this. If you punch in the cube root of 30, the cube root of 30, is it a twice? then you get this disastrous decimal expansion. In fact, I'd like you to tell me what it is. What is, when you press equals, what do you get? 3.1072350 Did I get the right digits at the beginning? Yep. Okay. Now, I want to point out two things. Number one, sure enough, these decimals they go on forever. And they never repeat. It's irrational, right? So it's you're never going to get the same re recurring number of decimals. But secondly, uh, do you notice it's uh, just a bit of a three? It should be just a bit above 3, right? Because 30 is just a bit above 27. Okay. Now, please note what you've got here, and you can label it as such. This guy here, the cube root of 30, is exact. There's no approximation, right? This is precisely what it is. It's a way of describing it. Whereas this is an approximation. Whoops, there's two Ps. Or a decimal approximation. Wait, is that a cert or like a tri cert or something like that? It's just called a cert. It's still, it's still just called a cert. So you can see 3.10723, if I stopped it there, that's not exactly what it's equal to. It's pretty close, but it's still an approximation. Okay? So depending on what the question is asking you, it'll be one or the other. Okay? One last one. Can I just give you one last one? Two x cubed equals negative. Okay, what are you going to do with this guy? Any suggestions? Arib. Let's bring the two to the Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to turn this problem into as close to some of these other problems that I know, which means I'm going to. I'm not going to get rid of the two, gonna and I'm not going to move the two either. You're going to get out, out, man. I'm going to... I'm going to divide both sides by two. Is that okay? Is that okay? What's that leave you with on the right hand side? Hold a second. You're ten. You're ten. Mainly so that, in five minutes, you will know this and you won't need to ask again because you'll understand it. You've divided both sides by two, which leaves you to this on the right hand side. This is also a nice neat cubic number, but note it's negative, right? So if you cube something to get to negative, well then, it must have been negative to begin with. And your calculator will also tell you that. The cube root of negative 125, bless you, it'll directly hand you negative 5. Okay. 